So we're on the air. Hello, everybody. Here we are again, Sophie Boyer and Lisa Ehrlichman talking about mindfulness and, and our, our corona crisis. So here we are in lockdown. And we've had already two dialogues. We're moving into our third dialogue today. Uh, working with our learning curve, so we're getting a little, a little better each time, I think. So thank you all for your your patience with us and for listening to us. Today we'd like to take as our topic uh, happiness, happiness in happiness in lockdown, achieving happiness now, when perhaps many of us feel like uh, happiness is hard to find, and. I'm going to ask Sophie to begin, and then we'll sort of talk about the subject of, of happiness and where happiness is, is, is located and how we can connect to happiness. And we'll talk for about 25 minutes, and then the last five minutes we're going to take to discuss some really specific um, tools that you can use to, to connect to your, to your happiness. Sophie. <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa, um, again, for this nice introduction. And thank you for this uh, very enriching conversation we are in together. Um, happiness. Yeah. It's very interesting to see that uh, actually being confined at home is really inviting us in some way to really question uh, what makes us feel happy and how do we seek for happiness in, in the world we're living in. And if we really look closely to that, uh, usually the things that are making us happy but temporarily we can't access to them right now very basic example if i want to have a, a nice meal i can't go to the restaurant if i want to be with my friend i cannot go to a bar or to a cafe to share a nice cup of coffee um, if i want to go to the gym to the to the gym i cannot neither so all these things, this desire we have, um, usually we tend to, t we think they make us happy and they do, but they do, they do in a very temporary, it's very temporary, you know? We just, we're just here feeding um, uh, or sense pleasure, I would say. But here actually, being confined is like, it's a bit like being on a retreat. How do we, how can we get a sense and, and taste a different kind of, um, of happiness that it's not based upon what we want and what we gain outside of where we are? So maybe I think you would like to say more about this, uh, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Um, there are several things that you touched upon that I think we could deeply expound upon. Um, one of them, which I don't want to touch on now, but I'm sure you'll get into it, is the temporary nature or the transitory nature of all, of all phenomenon, object, and events outside of us and the fact that happiness if it's attached to outside things is also temporary and so that kind of happiness is in is a temporary kind of thing and um you spoke of this other kind of of happiness this i like to call it this deep okayness and not okay so kind of okay, I'm um, um, accept it, okay, but okay, this, this deep okayness in life, and that's inside. So happiness, really lasting happiness, uh, it's, it's an inside job. This is something we find on the inside of us. 
if it's if our happiness is attached to outside objects and events it's bound to end before we will it's it's bound to be to leave us and then we're always dependent upon the continuation of this object or phenomenon and as we've learned right now things don't continue forever even the things that we thought were 100 percent many of them are gone right now and here we are no gym no coffee no friends no school no work um where is happiness and it's not out there it's within us and so i think happiness is is not a goal not something we move towards in our external world but it, it's the way we respond it's it's finding it within ourselves this this large sense of of okayness and, and peace that is so wide that it makes room for the the comings and goings of the things in our life so maybe our happiness is, is our response and maybe you'd like to pick up from here a little bit so okay. yeah yeah as you said where can we find happiness uh, in these moments where where it could come from you said this is something that that maybe we arise from within because we are we do not have access to what is outside usually and that fulfill or wanting um, and there, there are different different things to explore here but one thing that i could see when we want something and we can't have it what option do we have because you say you just said the attitude toward that is maybe to uh, how do we respond to that how we can we can open to that because this is a fact we are inside we can't get what we want in order to fill up this sense of satisfaction so maybe the key lies exactly in the same place it's about again to see and to recognize uh, how does it feel when this desire to get out and to go to coffee is not fulfilled how what what does it feel is it painful uh, does it bring does it bring anxiety does it bring agitation restlessness you know it's again like we have said in the two first video it's about how can i open to the reality i'm experiencing right now and the first thing is really maybe to open what it does to us to not satisfy this constant thirst that we have and the thing maybe that can help us with that is getting in touch to for every one of us what would it mean for us to renounce you know what what does it mean renunciation we usually see it as a big word when renunciation you have to give away everything you possess you have to let go of everything but in some different tradition, uh, letting go is seen slightly differently. It's not about abandoning uh, things. It's about learning to recognize and to see that the things that we attach to, that we cling to, they're temporary. And to, and to accept that they come, and they go this is what letting go is about it's not about okay this is not good for me i put it down this is letting go no letting go actually doesn't require that you do something it's something that arises from understanding of what is going on you know it's like letting go is that i i said that not long ago in a retreat it's like letting go is is the is the kind of collapsing of alternative into reality and my reality here is i'm locked in i can't get what i want how can i just be with that mm -hmm. simply yeah. 
don't know if you want to say more. Yes. Um, I think you're referring to the emotions um, that come up within us in that moment that we can't have what we want. And we want that coffee or we want that we want, we want things perhaps to be the way they were and, and they're not. And there's nothing we can do about that. That's just how it is. That's a reality that we are faced with. And of course, this means that we have to give up many things, renunciate. We have to renounce many things. We ren we're renouncing the coffee that we have once a day or, or out in the cafe or we're renouncing contact to our over to our friends and and lots of emotions come up within us and maybe they are emotions of the feeling of loss or the feeling of loss of control the feeling of fear the feeling of anger the feeling of loneliness in in large large amounts perhaps the feelings of being cut off and through these feelings i think we see that we really do believe uh, that if we have those things that we'll be happy. We can see that in the past we have attached our happiness to these outward uh, external things, either these objects or these events. And we see now how precarious that sort of feeling is or that sort of clinging is. You know, we, we hold on to something because this is, you know, my last, my last brownie. I need that. You know, if I don't have that, I'll be very unhappy. And um, when we find, when we're really alone with that and with the finality of the fact that we cannot change the situation outside at the moment, we are forced to turn within. We can either beat our head against the wall or the door and be unhappy. Or we stop and think, wait, wait a moment, you know, maybe, maybe it's my response uh, to this. Maybe it's the way I'm looking at this. Maybe I don't need that outside thing to be happy. Maybe my happiness is, is within and I can see, uh, feel those, those feelings coming up and not resist them, not resist the anger, not resist the unhappiness or the frustration, but allow that to come up. And then in, I think in allowing that to just be, allowing the fact that I don't have what I want right now and allowing the fact that this causes some uncomfortable emotions within me, I allow that. Then I notice that these emotions are just as transitory as the objects they're attached to, that they come and go as well. And, and underneath all this unbelievably fast coming and going, which is something that I notice the most in silence retreat when I don't get to talk to anybody. And, and then I notice how many emotions come up and down with me within just a one hour period. And they too are so transitory. And allowing them to come up and to come up and to stay a while and to go and the next to come up and to stay a while and to go. That underneath, I begin to see the underlying okayness, the underlying beauty in all of that and knowing that whatever unhappiness I have now, it too will end and will, will become something different. Yeah. 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 Really is that's why it's it's so useful to recognize these instead of pushing them away, as you said, really realizing first and seeing that uh, this is an emotion of frustration that is here right now. This is a fear that is here right now. This is just really to see it. Because again, when we start to see the content of what we are experiencing, the content of our thoughts, the content of our emotions, it's like we're creating a kind of a space, a kind of a gap 
and suddenly uh, the power of the thought or the emotion is not so sticky, it's not so strong because when we start to see, we stop feeding, we stop feeding it. And in doing so, we, we, we feel more spacious and there is space maybe for, uh, for interacting with it in a different way. And what we can see is that when, when we see it, we really recognize for what it is, a thought, an emotion, and you, have to, you really have the choice to not follow, again, to not feed. And here, in this dynamic, there is a profound um, opportunity um, um, to respond in a, pro in a more skillful way, probably in a, more, in a kinder way, in a more compassionate way, in a more, certainly we understand better. And for this, I think the one thing that, that two things maybe that I found for me very, very helpful is uh, when I see things, when I, for example, I face my own frustration and maybe, you know, my sense of worry being at home, um, because I recognize it. I know it's, it's gonna last, you know, for maybe a certain moment, but if I don't manipulate it just because I, I cultivate patience and, and also I, I, I really see, I trust, you know, this process that the process of, because I see things, you know, arising and passing away, I'm not, I'm not caught up in it. And to really trust that process, really trust it. And this is really helpful. And in doing so, that this is exactly what we talked about yesterday. We stop controlling, we stop trying to manipulate the situation. We engage with the situation the way it is without discriminating, you know, the fact that we don't like what's going on. We don't like to be frustrating. We don't like to not being able to do what we want. But in doing this, and here we, we, we start, you know, because we see things clearly, we stop feeding and in a way we renounce. And in renunciation, what we're gonna have a taste of is the sense of simplicity, the simplicity of just being with things as they are. And out of the simplicity, really taste a kind of a different sorts of joy and fulfillment because we are not trying to manipulate the flow of life, you know, the life that is expressing itself uh, within us, you know. And, and this is profoundly a source of happiness, I would say. I don't know if you... Yes, right. Um, you said space. You used the word space. And uh, getting space between yourself and the emotion. And this is this concept has been very helpful for me to understand that I am not my emotion. I am not my thoughts. My thoughts and emotion arise through my conditioning. And if I can back off of my thoughts, here am I and here are my thoughts and emotions. And if they're too tight on me, it, it hurts. It's painful. It's constrictive. And I think the goal is to just make some space around myself and these thoughts so that I can expand more. And I can look, instead of always looking through my perspective, I can look down on top of and to my perspective. And I can understand that the way I'm seeing things is just only one way to see this situation and there are myriad thousands gazillions of other ways to see it and other ways to respond and this gives me space and so i'm not as constricted into my viewpoint and my perspective because it's not truth and mm -hmm. and to understand that to back off of that a bit to breathe and just to look at it to see to as you said so see clearly what I am feeling and just look at it without pushing it away. Just say, oh, there it is. And in that saying, oh, perhaps there it is. It, it resumes its natural lifespan. It comes, it stays for a bit, and then it, 
it goes. And some of the uncomfortable stuff, it stay, it comes, it tortures you for a while, and it, and it goes. And it's like all the good stuff, as we've noticed, that comes and stays for a bit and goes too. We don't always want to see that, but this is also one of life's little realities. And that seeing of it, that ability to see that and to understand that all of this has an end is happiness. That is joy. That that is happiness, is, is the understanding of that. The understanding that, I think in Buddhism, they love to say the cup is already broken. You know, this is already passed. It's coming, it stays for a while, it's going, and that is beautiful and it's okay. And it's the little simple things that are so fulfilling. And fulfillment comes in the way I see things, not in the way they are, from my perspective. Yeah, I totally agree that it's, uh, it's the way we look at things is, is, is the recognition, the acknowledgement of what's going on that is, that is freeing. Actually, there is nothing to do. It's just the seeing and the recognition of what's going on that profoundly offers this space you were referring to, this space that allows us, that really gives us the opportunity to free ourselves. But one thing I would like to say with this seeing is that, okay, at some moment, you know, we can work with, with these difficult emotions, with this, with this thinking, with uh, the fact that we cling most of the time. Uh, there are different levels to work with that. Uh, at some moment, we won't recognize at all, and we, we recognize things when, once we, were, we are caught up in it. At some time, we will be able to to see the things and just to be with it, you know, oh, it's anger arising, oh, living, oh, moving, and then disappearing. Sometimes we have the conditions allow us to be with that. But sometimes, even if we recognize, we recognize that this is anger, this is frustration, this is fear, the conditions we are in, in the moment, you know, they will not allow us, they will, we don't have the resource in certain moment, you know, to just be with that. Yes. And here really, again, to use skillfully the power of kindness and to really recognize that I don't have the resource to be with that right now. So what do I have available in order to maybe bring a kind of sense of balance in that moment? And maybe in that moment, it would just go to the kitchen and get a piece of chocolate, you know. My favorite resource. <laughs> no, but it's really to see, you know, that, okay, we want to practice, okay, we want to understand things. But again, to check with which attitude we are cultivating this. Yeah. And be careful that if in doing so, we suddenly find ourselves more tensed, we should really inquire how am I looking at the situation here? It, it's, it's really, we have to check constantly that the way we practice, the way we are trying to cultivate this, this, this and deepen our view, uh, uh, deepening, yeah, this capacity to, to see things as they are, we are not striving. We are not judging ourselves. Yeah. We are not harsh to ourselves. And really to check, and, and if we are not aware of this, just check the body. The body will always tell you. Yes. And for sure, if you like the body's like this, you can be sure you're probably maybe putting too much effort, too much energy. There is maybe some judgmental thinking arising, you know, or really, really check. The idea is really just to get curious and more developing a sense of learning to play with all this instead of I have to get this, I have to understand this. And it's a very different approach. So checking our intention, checking with which attitude we are watching, I think is very important. I don't know. I agree. And I think what you're saying is that one of the best tools that we have at our disposal to help us um, work with, with all of this, work with things that we cannot change and work with the uncomfortable emotions that arise through it is kindness and kindness specifically towards ourselves 
and to understand we're, we're, we're working on, we're doing okay, we're fine. It's step by step, we don't have to be perfect. And if we're not being kind to ourselves, we will see it and feel it in the body somewhere in the form of tension, in the form of contraction. And so perhaps breathing out and allowing some of that tension to flow out of the body is one of the first um, tools that we have when we recognize an uncomfortable emotion arising in us. And then maybe to give ourselves a, a little hug and to pat ourselves on the back and say, I noticed, I noticed, you know, I, I saw it. That's such a huge step. I'm awake. I see what's happening. And that's such a wonderful uh, such a wonderful moment that's just the total beginning of change and the more often we can do that moment for moment being kind to ourselves and to see the resistance and the resistance will always show itself as tension in the body to see that waking up to that is waking up it's about that moment and about congratulating ourselves for seeing it and for for being there for ourselves and for being thankful that we get to be in this situation as hard as that sounds right now and we get to wake up. Yeah. Sophie, we have four and a half minutes if we want to, and we don't, we have three and a half minutes if we want to be strict with ourselves, I know. May I give you the last words? Yeah, please. <laughs> go for it. I go for it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> okay, so just maybe very practical things, uh, practice that we can do, you know, while we're confined and uh, uh, it's really to cultivate maybe two things, on one hand gratitude and on the other hand a sense of appreciative joy. And, and this will help, you know, with this, with this feeling of, not, of, of being in conditions that are unsatisfactory, being with or all not wanting and disliking, you know, the situation we are in. But just, and, and cultivating these two qualities just to bring balance, you know, not to see only what is, what is not okay, but really giving more energy and, 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 and uh, attention to what is good in the situation we are in. And maybe really take the time to be grateful at the end of the day for having the chance maybe not to work and take this time, you know, to be with and by ourselves, to have the, the time to be more with our kids or with our partner, husband or wife, you know, and this opportunity that is given, that is given maybe the opportunity, you know, to, to be a bit more outside and to, and to, to really enjoy a better air, all this kind of thing. We can be grateful for so many things, but just maybe to remind ourselves to do it. And also to cultivate this kind of appreciative joy where you can really be, you know, appreciate all the efforts you made today, you know, in order to be more present, in order to be with this unsatisfactoriness you feel. This unsatisfactoriness that is due to the fact that you can find but to really to learn to rejoice about all the efforts, you know, you've put into that to, to learn to be with that as best as you can. Really, this is a very, very powerful practice. <laughs> and it changes everything, speaking from my experience. <laughs> it changes everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, we'll be talking again. I'm not sure what our topic will be. We'll discuss that. <laughs> Thank you for watching us. Um, enter your, your moment. Be, be kind to yourself. Be open to yourself. Be in your body. Notice the constriction and the tension and just let it go. Breathe it out and congratulate yourself for every effort and any effort, it all leads to more understanding and clarity about yourself and about the way you typically respond 
and that gives you every opportunity to do so in much more awareness, which is always um, more beneficial and wholesome for yourself and the world. Sophie, thank you. And we'll talk again tomorrow.